respected viewers, welcome to another episode as we discuss some of the key points mentioned in the book Politics, the Very Heart of Islam, written by Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. These topics Grand. were discussed and will be discussed with my dear guest, Dr. Zuhair. Welcome back, Hi, Doctor. Thank you very much. Now, in the previous episodes, we did talk about some of uh, the policies established by Prophet Muhammad uh, and how he ran his government, based on what? And we mentioned uh, based on equality, based on uh, courage, based on forgiveness, uh, and various other aspects and policies. Now, we got to the point where the message of Islam began to spread. Many places began to know what Islam is, who the Muslims were, what kind of message the Prophet came to preach. Was it the, the, the message of violence? No. They seen that was the, the, the message of forgiveness when they saw in his battles, the ones that were running away, Prophet Muhammad let them run without anyone hurting them, uh, and so on and so forth. If the dear viewers want to check this out, you can view the previous episodes uh, by logging into our YouTube channel. The book will be provided in the description below, uh, so you can uh, follow up and uh, read the book as well. Now, we got to the hospitality part. What can you tell me about that? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu ala salam ala muhammad wa alihi al-tayibin al um, yes, we've got to the policy of the Prophet ﷺ on hospitality, on receiving the, receiving the delegations. Mm -hmm. But before that, as to why, what happened that people started coming, yes. all the tribes, uh, the nomads uh, from around um, Arabia, uh, and, uh, and of course different religions, even the polytheists, the idol worshippers, the, the Jews and Christians, yes. they started visit visiting the Prophet. They heard something about the Prophet. The, this, this new Prophet, this man, uh, which of course the Jews and Christians had heard of him or had read about him in their, in their uh, scriptures, in their, in their books. Um, so they started hearing about him. But before that, first of all, they started the, the message of uh, of this of the teachings of the Prophet started uh, spreading throughout the land uh, with the morals that he had, uh, the forgiveness, the uh, policy of forgiveness that he had towards others. Uh, uh, so this made uh, people uh, wanting to see him, wanting to meet him, wanting to listen to him. Uh, that in itself, the fact that we have scores or dozens of delegations, or probably hundreds of delegations, uh, over a stretch of time, started visiting the Prophet, uh, it goes to show that he, they must have heard something. Mm -hmm. They must have heard something significant uh, that made them uh, to uh, take the trouble and the journey uh, sometimes very uh, distant uh, locations to travel uh, 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 the long uh, and difficult roads of Arabia at that time to come and see the Prophet. They they had they'd heard all the good things about the Prophet. Uh, as I said, his forgiveness and his attitude. Um, you mentioned uh, battle, uh, for example, not to sort of chase those who, f who flee. Uh, I'd like to touch on that slightly before I begin, and that was uh, the Prophet ﷺ never engaged in any uh, preemptive, preemptive battle. He never uh, 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 invaded. All his battles and all his fightings were nothing but defensive. Basically, uh, the uh, polytheists or the Quraysh and the confederates uh, they used to get together and they used to invade. They used to attack the Prophet ﷺ. And um, <clears throat> all his battles and every battle that the Prophet uh, took part in were absolutely defensive. But despite that, uh, the Prophet ﷺ used to instruct his people, his soldiers, um, that when you approach, when you... The, array in front of the other side. First of all, don't begin. Let them begin the, fight, the, the fighting. 
And secondly, encourage them, advise them to think about it. Try to discourage them, discourage the other side from engaging in fighting. And in fact, on a number of occasions, the Muslims, on instruction from their Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, managed to, in, uh, to uh, convince and discourage the other side from fighting. He said, if you have any arguments, let's talk. Uh, uh, so they endeavored very hard on the instructions of the Prophet sallallahu to never engage in fighting if possible. And if as a last resort they had to fight, that's because they started to attack the Muslim side. Uh, of course, they needed to defend themselves. So all the battles that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, in short, all the battles that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, was engaged in were defensive. And it's, it was these things that people heard about. Mm -hmm. His teachings, his morals, uh, his forgiveness, his magnanimity, that attracted all these people from around Arabia and beyond to come and see the Prophet mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the Prophet personally used to receive the, the people, the nomads, the Arabs from around uh, the land. Uh, he used to receive them, he used to ask about their names and what they do and how they lead their lives and he used to encourage them, he used to advise them and uh, he used to uh, promote and highlight their, the positive aspects of their whatever they had mm -hmm. and he used to ignore or turn a blind eye on their negative aspects. Um, it was through this that he, he managed to attract. He told them what, what is Islam, what Islam is about. And in uh, almost all cases, uh, of course, he gave them gifts. He showed them enormous hospitali hospitality. He served them himself uh, uh, and uh, with the help of others. And then uh, he used to give them gifts when, on, when they wanted to leave. So they, he left a very positive impact on the individuals who'd come to visit him. Mm -hmm. And in this, in this uh, work, um, uh, the author, um, in brief, but he, he mentions uh, the case of 29 visits from de 29 delegations uh, who had come uh, to visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi um, the author mentions the name of the delegation, that is the name of the tribe mm -hmm. who'd, um, delegation who'd, uh, who'd come to see the Prophet, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the conversation that went on between members of, that, of, that, of those delegations, individual delegations, and the Prophet himself. And what he said to them, uh, what he encouraged them to do, and, uh, uh, and of course he encouraged them, uh, if they hadn't become Muslim, they encouraged them to become Muslim, embrace Islam, uh, given the beautiful teachings of Islam, and majority of cases, uh, the overwhelming cases, they used to embrace Islam there and then, and they used to go back, invite their tribes to Islam. On few cases, they thought, they said they'll think about it, and then when they left the Prophet, they sort of, uh, by letters or by envoys, said to him, informed him that they had converted to Islam. Mm -hmm. um, so, the author mentions the name of the tribes, uh, the delegations that visited him from those tribes, and also the conversation that went on between them, the gifts that he gave, mm -hmm. uh, the Prophet gave to them, and how he treated them uh, individually, um, and the fact that the majority embraced Islam, and, and all of them, they went back to invite their mm -hmm. tribe to Islam. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, by doing that, uh, this was another, as I say, another policy in the sense that he uh, uh, tried um, to attract them through his, uh, through his manners and through his teachings. Um, uh, and also, by as I said, by highlighting their positive points and turning blind eye on their negative, encouraging them to do good more and more. Uh, Islam really spread throughout the land because um, as I said, probably hundreds of delegations came to visit the Prophet They went back and they encouraged uh, others to embrace, embrace Islam and adhere to the teachings of Islam. Uh, 
And these people who were, if you like, they were called the Jahiliya, the era of Jahiliya, the era of ignorance, uh, as referred to in the Quran. Um, uh, for example, Do you want the rule and the teachings of the ignorance, the teachings of the era of Jahiliya? These people were turned into um, uh, a good nation, خَيْرُ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ uh, after Islam. Uh, and this was, again, another one of the winning policies of the Prophet oh. uh, uh, By winning the hearts and minds of the tribes, of the people, as I said, not only tribes, but the people, Mus Muslim, um, oh. Jews and Christians as well, uh, by winning their heart and mind and teaching them and encouraging them, uh, Islam spread throughout not only throughout uh, the land, but also they became a role model, if you like, from a time when they were a jahiliya, an era of ignorance, they turned into khayru ummah, uh, as, the, as the author highlights this issue in this work. Mm -hmm. So we do get an understanding of why the author made that subtitle mm. the winning policy. Mm. I mean, now we do get the full picture mm. of how Prophet Muhammad uh, was able to grasp the hearts of, of, of those uh, who visited him, and some visited him not only on friendly occasions, like not not only on friendly friendly terms, but you know they they wanted to struggle. But yet, the emotion of Prophet Muhammad and his manners and his way of forgiveness uh, won over uh, the hearts of such individuals. But we'll continue the discussion uh, after a break, inshallah. So, respected viewers, uh, do stay tuned for after this break. We'll be back shortly. A brief biography of the eminent Islamic authority, Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi. He was born on the 20th of the Hijjah in the year 1360 after Hijrah in the holy city of Karbala, Iraq. He was raised and cultured in a family that was renowned for its history of learning, striving, sacrifice and morals. He received his specialist education of the Islamic sciences at the hands of eminent scholars of the Hausa until he acquired a distinguished degree of Ijtihad. Through his relentless endeavors, he developed himself in the quality of continually seeking knowledge along with unremitting observance of piety. Tirelessly promoting the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them, disseminating their culture and defending their sacred laws and Sharia. Ah. He has written numerous works in various fields on different levels, ranging from politics, economics, history, and ethics, to specialist works of Fahawzeh students on such topics as Fiqh and Usul, which is also known as jurisprudence that total more than 80. Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi has been teaching at the Hausa for more than 40 years. He is distinguished for being accessible to the people, directly dealing and meeting with various sectors of members of society, listening to diverse views from different spectrum of the community. Equally, he is distinguished for his humility respecting the young and old and also for his tolerance in regarding to insult or evil with kindness and courteousness. He is renowned for his independence and for his policy of boycotting despotic governments. He over observes hundreds of organizations and institutions throughout the globe, for example those that address social issues such as marriage services and social reforms, those that address humanitarian matters such as clinics, orphanages, financial organizations giving interest-free loans, intellectual institutions such as centers for research and studies, seminaries, houses, libraries, as well as religious centers such as mosques and Husseinias. 
Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the second part of today's episode. Before the break, we talked about some of the delegations and some of the acts uh, performed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that grasped and wind the hearts uh, of those uh, who either had amnity towards him or the ones who came just to visit him uh, out of pleasure of seeing him. This was discussed with my dear esteemed guest, Dr. Zuhair. Welcome back, Hayu Doctor. Thank you very much. Allah uh, Kum. Now, we touched upon some of these delegations and for the dear viewers, you can uh, also, uh, by watching the video on YouTube, at Imam Hussain 3 TV, you can uh, go to the description box below and click on the link uh, to view the enormous amount of delegations uh, that came uh, to see Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. Now we touched upon the winning policy and how, uh, through his actions uh, and his uh, welcoming uh, and giving gifts to those who came to him, uh, he won the hearts, and that's uh, how Grand Ayatollah Shirazi puts it uh, as the winning policy uh, to the government of Prophet Muhammad. Now, one of the main objectives, uh, moving on to the next one, one of the main objectives of a government is keeping promises. And the Holy Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad wasallam, took it to the next level by making it and placing it as one of the main policies of his ideal government. Nowadays, we see many politicians of various countries, if not the majority of the countries, who promise the nation or promise their citizens many things yet none of them or some of them do not get accomplished or they do not fulfill the promise that they give uh, to their citizens what is the importance of this policy what was its importance in prophet muhammad's government and what is the importance of this policy in modern day government um. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعليه الطيبين الطاهرين. The important significance of this policy goes without saying. It's so evident in again in attracting the people and bringing about goodness in 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 the individuals, other than winning the heart and mind of the people. The, the, the policy of keeping promises or uh, being loyal to individuals uh, reflects uh, massively in, in the conduct uh, and the teachings as well. In the conduct as well as teachings of the Prophet mm -hmm. uh, Whatever he taught, he practiced. Uh, and one of them is uh, this, uh, this policy of mm -hmm. uh, uh, Keeping promise, keeping the promises he makes, mm -hmm. uh, and being loyal to individuals. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the author uh, of this uh, book, uh, Grand Ayatollah Sayyid uh, Sadiq Shirazi, he mentions a few of those incidents mm -hmm. uh, uh, to reflect on the attitude of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this respect. <coughs> uh, for for example, uh, while he was uh, in Mecca. And it was before the start of his mission, uh, the mission of Islam, uh, uh, when it was revealed to him that he should he should convey the mission of Islam to the mm -hmm. to the masses. Um, uh, they uh, he promised that uh, they made an appointment so that the, pro the prophet will meet an individual at a certain location. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems that the other person. Forgot, forgot about this uh, appointment, mm -hmm. and the prophet turned up uh, uh, at the location which was specified, and he waited for the prophet, uh, for the individual to turn up, and of course he didn't. It seems that he's forgotten, and it says that he was he waited there for three days, mm -hmm. and after three days, the 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 person must have remembered, and he. Uh, came and he saw the Prophet was still waiting for him. And he said, why? He said, well, I promise you that I'll wait for you. So I, I waited for you. Wow. Um, uh, this is one of the examples of uh, the Prophet keeping, keeping his promises to mm -hmm. others. Um, uh, 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 in another instance, when uh, it, it is stated, it's reported that uh, uh, 
Sayyida Khadija, uh, the first uh, wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whom the Prophet loved very much. And uh, uh, she supported uh, the Prophet throughout, with, with whatever means she, kept, she could, and uh, throughout her life. Um, Sayyida Khadija Sallallahu Alaihi she had uh, uh, a friend, and when there was a boycott of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family, uh, boycott of himself and his family in, while they were in Mecca. Uh, um, uh, this boycott was imposed so that it, it started from economic, bo economic boycott and then gradually spread to social uh, boycott as well in the sense that no one was allowed to visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not only, and no one w was allowed to trade with the, with the, fa <coughs> the family of the Prophet. <coughs> Excuse me. Still, um, uh, Sayyidah Khadija Sallallahu she had a friend who was uh, loyal to her. She used to come secretly and visit her mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, keep her company. Uh, and uh, while throughout, you know, throughout this embargo, and of course, uh, as is known, Sayyidah Khadija Sallallahu she died while uh, they were in Sha'b Abi Talib, in the uh, quarters of Abu Talib. Uh, 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 in embargo, so she, she died at that, at that period of time. Um, after uh, the death of Sayyidah Khadija Sallallahu uh, Alaihi the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to send gifts to that lady, uh, the friend of, uh, uh, out of his loyalty to her. Um, and he used to say that she used to come and visit us and visit Khadija at the time of the embargo. And uh, it is good to keep, uh, to keep loyal, for uh, being loyal is part of faith. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was another conduct that he used to keep, he used to be loyal to the friend of uh, Sayyidah Khadija uh, because of her loyalty towards her. So he didn't ignore or forget about that loyalty, and he kept that loyalty towards mm -hmm. that lady. Um, and th these things, this not only, as I said earlier, not only it wins the heart and mind of the individual, but it brings that goodness in the individual that they will practice uh, mm -hmm. that attitude as well. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's reported that um, there was a delegation who, which, which came from uh, and Najashi or the Negesis, who was the king uh, uh, in um, uh, in Africa, <clears throat> and uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he used to uh, uh, he used to serve them. Not only he received them and showed them hospitality, but he used to serve them uh, with whatever they needed himself personally. The companions used to say please allow us to do it, you shouldn't be doing this. And he said, I'm doing this out of my loyalty towards them. They, uh, they uh, honored our friends and our companions when they were with them. So I'd like to return that honor in turn, uh, myself. Um, <clears throat> so that was something which was very crucial and that was a policy of the Prophet keeping promises and being loyal to individuals. Mm -hmm. um, um, Another one which is very important is uh, with, the, with respect to the Ansar or the supporters. Mm -hmm. As you know, the Muslims um, <coughs> were categorized in two divisions, the Muhajireen and the Ansar. Mm -hmm. Muhajireen are the migrants who migrated with the Prophet before or after, immediately before and after, uh, from Mecca to Medina. And the Ansar, who are the supporters, the people of Medina, who, who supported the Prophet and the, and the migrants. Mm -hmm. um, so after the liberation of Mecca, uh, when uh, the Muslims liberated Mecca without any fighting, without a shed of blood, because of the policy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, he didn't choose, this was his hometown, <coughs> Mecca was where he was born, and people expected that he would stay there. This yeah. is his, uh, his, his, his hometown, his place where he was born. Um, but uh, 
what the Prophet did was to the surprise of the Ansar, he said, no, because you were loyal to me, I will stay loyal to you. And um, my life and my death will be with you. And uh, he, he appointed someone to be um, the governor of Mecca. And he didn't even stay one night in Mecca. And he left for Medina to stay with the Ansar and, of course, with the Muhajireen. Uh, which that is something which, of course, uh, 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 surprised the, the Ansar because they expected something different. Mm -hmm. um, um, it goes, th these are the teachings which the Prophet ﷺ uh, 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 recommended to others and practiced himself. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, we do understand that you, the examples that have been brought forth, they are on a personal level, if you will, but on a political level. I mean, for, for us, yes, we, we get an understanding of you know, showing our loyalty or keeping our promises to one another. But if we're talking in a governmental status or a governmental level, mm. what and how did the Prophet keep the promises in his government? Yes, we mentioned how he uh, kept loyal to his, uh, the, the, the supporters and the migrants of not going back or putting a general <coughs> but, or a governor. How was the Prophet, or how did he keep his promises after entering Medina, or how did he run uh, that policy? Um, keeping the, his promises and being loyal, um, um, even on governmental level, uh, continued. Uh, mm -hmm. It goes without saying that the Prophet would, would do uh, the same thing. Uh, a quick example of this, if you like, on not personal level, but on governmental level, mm -hmm. is um, the case of the peace treaty of Hudaybiyah. Yes. So basically, he was a government which, this was a year before uh, the liberation of Mecca. <clears throat> if you like, he was the head of state in Medina. So the Quraysh, uh, if you like, who were the <clears throat> rulers uh, of, of Mecca. Uh, they entered into a peace treaty uh, at the location of Hudaybiyah, so it's referred to as the Peace Treaty of Hudaybiyah. And as part of that peace treaty, uh, they said that um, those uh, Muslims who decide to convert back to their previous religion, um, they should be allowed to do so. And they should be allowed to go back to Mecca. Um, but those who flee Mecca, a free Quraysh, and for instance, either Muslims or become Muslims, they shouldn't be allowed in Medina. Where did they go? And the Prophet agreed to that. Um, and um, people used to come and to the Prophet and they say, you know, we were in Mecca and we decided to embrace Islam. And he says, Sorry, I can't accept you. <coughs> okay, embrace Islam, but I can't let you in Medina. This is part of the peace treaty of, um, uh, of Hudaybiyah. So people who, Muslims who were in Medina, to change their mind, they can go back to Mecca. But those who are in Mecca, if they become Muslims and flee Quraysh, they can't go to Medina. So what's the fate of these Muslims? What, what happens to them? Um, <coughs> well, he said, I can't accept you. This, the point is, I'll, I'll answer your question, but the point is that um, he kept their promises. Yes. His promise the promise towards is, them. Is, is the um, he kept their promise towards them uh, on governmental level, mm -hmm. not on personal level. Uh, it was the peace treaty. Of course, at the time, a lot of the so-called Sahaba, they objected to this peace treaty. This is mm -hmm. one way. It's not fair. It's un one-sided. But the Prophet agree agreed to it. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, so people used to come, Muslims used to come, say, we've embraced Islam, we want to join you. The Prophet used to say, no, you have to go and sort yourself out. Mm -hmm. So they used to stay in the desert. And this number grew, and they were hungry. They didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. So the caravan of Abu Sufyan used to come from Sham, pass from the side of Medina, go to, Quray uh, to, go to Mecca. As you know, Sham is, is like in the north. Then Medina is north of Mecca and they used to come down. Yes. Uh, uh, 
So what they did, they started attacking those caravans to get what they needed. Mm -hmm. Because they were, they had no food, no nothing, whether it was cold they needed, uh, uh, something to keep them warm. Uh, the situation got to the state where the leaders of Quraysh, Abu Sufyan himself, <coughs> came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said, please, can we change, can we make some modification to this peace treaty? Those who decide to come become Muslim, allow them in. Wow. <laughs> so that, um, because they've, they've become a headache for us and for our caravan. So, but the, so this, this was the answer to your the, question. The point is, yeah. The point is he kept their promise, his promise to, to, the, to the infidels. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the most amazing traits uh, of Prophet Muhammad and, uh, and of his government. Now, in conclusion, we can come to say that uh, in the past few episodes and in tonight, uh, the government of Prophet Muhammad is based on purity, if you will. And uh, of course, without purity, uh, any government, how successful it may get, the individuals who want to establish a government, they will not succeed like this individual. I mean, what, like 20 years? Two decades, less than two decades, just the individual began with 120,000 in Ghadir Khum, now one point, over 1.2 billion uh, of Muslims across the world. So we do see the establishment of Prophet Muhammad uh, advancing in, in the most proper way uh, but through his actions he was able to accomplish uh, such uh, such achievements but I would like to thank you very much uh, for tuning for joining us tonight may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the ability to continue serving Ahl Bayt uh, respective viewers thank you very much for tuning in may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability uh, to continue serving as well as spreading the true message of Islam I do advise you to read uh, this very well beneficial book uh, will be provided uh, in the description box on our uh, YouTube uh, channel at Imam Hussain 3 TV you can check that out you can also follow us on Facebook at Imam Hussain 3 TV as well thank you very much wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh